Hello, my favorite English language learners. It is your favorite English teacher here, Amy Joy. And as many of you know, I have been teaching academic English to international students at an American university for the last seven years. And in this video, I'm going to teach you 26 academic verbs that I wish my students would use in their writing more often. Whenever I am grading student essays, I often have to cross out some of my students' more basic word choices and teach them these words in order to get their writing to an academic level. So I encourage you to watch this whole video and study these words so you can get your TOEFL scores up or impress your professor on that next essay. And to make it easier for you, I have included a free downloadable PDF in the description below Below, so you can study and practice these words on your own. So let's go ahead and get started. When you're studying in a university, a lot of the topics we discuss are related to problems and how to fix them. And so the first word I want to teach you is the word encounter. This means to meet or face, especially referring to a problem, challenge, or obstacle. And oftentimes my students will say things like this. The researchers had several problems when testing their theory or people worldwide are getting problems as a result of climate change, like damage from natural disasters and a lack of water. Now in this first example, it's okay to say that the researchers had several problems, but you sound so much more academic and descriptive when you say encountered several problems. And in, in this second example, I often see my students overuse the verb get, but we actually don't really say get a problem. So it would be so much better to say are now encountering problems. Okay, now let's look at this group of words which all have similar meanings or uses. Here we have evaluate. This means to form an opinion about the value of something or to state its positive and negative qualities. Next is examine. This means to look closely at something to understand it better. Explore means to study something in detail. Expose means to reveal something hidden. To highlight means to emphasize or point out something important. Identify means to recognize and name something specific. And to reflect means to show or reveal how something really is. We usually use this word to talk about evidence and statistics and what they show us about problems in society. Now this whole group of words can be super useful in a variety of situations in academia. For example, we can use these words to report what an author says or what they have studied. So you can say the author evaluates, examines, explores, exposes, highlights, or identifies challenges in the efforts to stop global warming. This means that the author has looked at the problem closely and talks about their findings and opinions of it. We can also use some of these words to talk about examples and evidence and what they show. For example, these survey results reflect, expose, or highlight how divided our country is. The results reveal something to us and tell us how important it is. Or when writing a conclusion, we often make suggestions for future research or want to highlight or emphasize how important the issue is. So we can use these words this way. Considering the negative impact of fast fashion on the environment, it's important to continue evaluating, examining, exploring, highlighting, or identifying possible solutions to make the fast fashion industry more sustainable. And to help you use these words more naturally, here are some useful collocations. All of these words can combine with problem, issue, challenge, and difficulty. Okay, let's move on to talking about fixing problems. First is to address something. This means to deal with, discuss, or focus on a problem. To combat means to fight against something, and resolve means to find a solution to a problem. So if we are talking about the problem of homelessness in the United States, we can say politicians are working to address, combat, or resolve the issue of homelessness in the US. They are working to deal with it, fight it, and fix it or solve it. Which leads me to our next word, intend to do something. This means to plan or try to do something, but not always with success. So continuing with our example, we can say, politicians have intended to address, combat, or resolve the issue of homelessness in the US, but their efforts have not been very successful. And continuing on, our next word is to approach. This means taking action to fix a problem in a specific way. And you're also probably very familiar with the noun form of this word, an approach. We also have to develop. 
This means to create and gradually improve or add detail to a plan. To determine means to decide after thinking and careful consideration. To shift means to change the position or direction of something. And to engage in or engage with something means to participate or be involved in something to try to understand. And again, here are some really useful collocations with these verbs to help you use and understand them a bit better. You can approach a problem, a situation, an issue, or a task. Or sometimes I will even ask my students how they approached an assignment, an essay, a paper, or a project. When I ask this, I want to know about their approach or their thinking process, how they arrived at their final product. We also have develop. You can develop a plan, a strategy, or develop your skills. And you can also develop a paper, an assignment, or a paragraph. Remember, developing means gradually improving something or gradually adding in details. So if you develop a paragraph, you are improving it by making it longer and adding detail. And determine means to review something and then come to a conclusion or a decision. So you can determine a cause or an effect, you can determine an outcome, determine the best course of action or the best plan, determine a solution or determine the best option. The verb shift means to change the position or direction. So you might shift your focus or change your focus, shift the direction or shift the way we think about something. And the verb engage really meaning to involve yourself with something. So you can engage in conversation, engage in discussion, engage in the process, engage with the community, or something we say oftentimes in university, engage with the material. This means to really read something many times, involve yourself with it, think about it a lot, engage with it. Now let's take a look at a short paragraph using a lot of these words. We can say, recently politicians have approached homelessness with a mix of strategies, including increasing affordable housing, mental health care services, and drug rehabilitation centers. However, their approaches do not seem to be working. So the government is developing a new plan. Once it is completed, voters will determine or decide if they want to approve the new plan. If not, the leaders will need to shift their focus, change their focus, and find a new solution. It's important for citizens to engage in this process so their voices are heard. And before we move on to the next group of words, I want to remind you if you are studying for the TOEFL, the IELTS, or want to expand your English vocabulary, then you might be interested in my workbook. 75 Advanced C1, C2 Level Words. In this book, I have chosen 75 useful advanced words that I use as a native English speaker. And in this book, I also teach you their collocations and their grammar, so you not only understand these words, but can also use them on that next language exam or in your conversations in daily life. So after watching this video, go to my website, yourfavoriteenglishteacher.com, and buy my workbook today to improve your English vocabulary. Okay, now that we've talked about addressing problems, let's talk about success and future thinking. Here we have the verbs to progress or to make progress, to overcome and to ensure. The verb progress or to make progress means to move forward or closer to a solution. To overcome means to succeed in dealing with a problem. And to ensure means to make sure or guarantee something. So in an example, we can say, Politicians have made progress in reducing homelessness in the United States, but there is still more work to do. In order to overcome this societal challenge, we need to ensure or guarantee affordable housing, mental health services, and job opportunities. And next we have the verb to benefit from. I know you know the word benefit as a noun form, but I don't often see my students use it in its verb form, which is also very common. So to benefit from something means to gain or receive good results from something. To encourage means to give support, confidence, or hope to someone. And motivate is very similar to encourage, and it means to give someone a reason to do something or inspire. And continuing on with our example, we can say, government programs such as temporary housing and job training can benefit individuals by providing safety and stability which in turn can motivate and encourage the homeless to take steps toward independence. So notice here that the programs can benefit. 
we're using that word benefit as a verb. A lot of times I'll see my students say something like, can give benefits, but that's a little bit wordy and the verb give isn't the most descriptive or academic. So I really prefer when my students use the verb form over the noun form can benefit individuals. And then we can see that the safety and stability provided by these programs can motivate and encourage or give confidence and hope to the homeless population to take steps towards independence. And then our last three verbs here are to transform, which means to make a big change, to strengthen, which means to make something stronger, and to enhance. This means to improve or make something better in its quality, its appearance, or its effectiveness. Basically, you're increasing or intensifying how good or successful something is. So our example says, these programs can truly transform the lives of homeless individuals by strengthening their skills and providing them with stable housing. These initiatives enhance their overall well-being and increase their chances of long-term success. So here we see how the government programs can really make a big change in the lives of individuals or transform their lives. When talking about problems and solutions, we often want to transform society or the problems in society. And we also see that these programs strengthen or make their skills stronger. And lastly, these programs can enhance an individual's well-being or improve or make better their quality of living. Now, don't forget to download the free PDF in the description below so you can study these words and actually put them into use on your next TOEFL or IELTS exam or in that next university level essay. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel so you can keep improving your English with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.